guys, it's your girl here, Natto Soup, and we are here with another Crayola review. Today we're taking a look at the Crayola Education watercolors. So keep watching. for a quick second here. I have been reviewing so many Crayola products here on this channel. And it's not because Crayola sends me products because they sure do not. And it's not because people send me products because they sure don't. It's because when I do conventions, I have so many parents tell me they've got kids who want to be artists, they want to pursue art, and they want to buy them decent art supplies that aren't going to be toxic and um, they don't want to break the bank because they're not yet sure if their kid is going to pursue this for longer than, you know, six minutes and then get bored. So I've been reviewing a lot of Crayola because Crayola tends to be what everybody has access to, what most people can afford, and most people don't mind picking up a few different Crayola sets for their kids, um, and it's not going to break your bank. So we're taking a look at the Education Watercolors mixing set today, but we've taken a look at a lot, a lot, a lot of Crayola sets. We've, on the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com, as part of the Affordable Art Supply Series, we take, took a look at your standard, your basic, your everybody's seen it, Crayola 8 color set. Brings back childhood memories for oh so many of us. Took a look at that over there. We took a look at the Crayola Education watercolors. Oh, so similar. How are they different? Which um, are not, oh, what the? What happened there? Huh, that's super weird. I haven't had a chance yet to do my field test with these. I was actually gonna do that right after this video. And that's an interesting thing that happened that I don't know why it happened or what that is because they were dry when I put them away. Anyway, these are the education colors. They're basically the same set, just more saturated. They don't even use pigments, they're using dyes. So finally, we're taking a look at the mixing set, which is what I thought I was getting when I got this. And the mixing set, just unboxed it on camera for you guys. So this is my first look too. Mixing set is, I think, eight colors. Yep. And it is more like what a, a traditional, I want to say, artist would use in that you get two reds, two yellows, two blues, and they also include black and a white which is not necessarily in keeping with your average artist mixing set, which would have two different types of browns using earth pigments or earth tones, and then maybe a black and white or a Payne's gray. So the, the literature that came with this, Crayola Education Watercolors, mixing set, transparent watercolor techniques, mix colors and or black with washes of water without using white. Opaque, okay, so the whites to make these opaque. Okay, more like wash. Uh, opaque watercolor techniques, mix white and or black with any color to create opaque color tints and shades. Suggestions for color mixing. Countless colors with greater intensity than those in a watercolor set can be produced by mixing these paints. White can be used to create tints of color in opaque watercolor painting. Black is included as one option to mix in with and create shades of color. So basically they just repeated what they said. Primaries and secondaries. Primary red, mix red violet plus red orange. Primary yellow, use the yellow only. I guess one of these two yellows, we're gonna find out in a minute. Primary blue, mix blue violet plus turquoise. So this is, must be blue violet. Okay, so it, it's purple and then a blue, okay. I'm following along, y'all. Little different than I was taught color theory as a watercolorist, but we're here. Oranges, mix primary yellow in varying proportions plus red orange. Greens, mix primary yellow in varying proportions plus your primary blue mix. So these two mix with a yellow. Violets, mix red violet in varying proportions plus blue violet. Hmm. So this actually seems like it might be a very versatile set. And these are not as smooth and shiny as Crayolas tend to be when brand new. So it gives me hope that A, there's not like a boatload of glycerin and B, we might get some pigments. Paint colors, red violet, red orange, primary yellow two. Okay, so these are both primary yellow. So one is not a cool yellow and one is not a warm yellow as you would normally do with mixing sets. They're just both yellow. Uh, ba -ba -ba, turquoise, blue violet, black and white. And Crayola is a Hallmark company. So I am going to 
play along and I'm going to do the mixing the way I would if I were following the card. We're going to start with that. And then we'll save it for the field test when we do all of our all of our fancy mixing. So to begin with, I'm going to activate my colors, which is actually very simple. I'm going to take a little spray bottle of water and just mist some water on my little pans. Like so. And we receive a Crayola size seven tack long brush, which is actually not the worst. I'm really excited that Crayola has started offering kind of nicer brushes with their education sets. Unfortunately, it's not at all the brush on the cover of the package. The one on the cover of the package is actually a much nicer brush. It has a belly and better crimping on the ferrules and all this other stuff. And then this is our other education set, which is really looking kind of scary, but that's okay. That's okay. I don't see any mold. Um, probably the glycerin leaked out. So we're going to start with red violet. Oh no, that's a, very, that's a very dye based color. That is, that is, I wouldn't even call that a red violet. That is like magenta. red orange which is a red orange all right we're just going to use one of the primary yellows or maybe we'll designate one to go with our warms and one to go with our cools and that way we don't get super muddy colors but that's not of importance at this moment then we've got turquoise which is probably yeah it's cyan so what we really have is something kind of similar to that lucas set i reviewed for you guys where we have a, a magenta we have a cyan we have a black and then we have yellow a cmyk oh here we go starting to get some of that glycerin glycerin it's actually not that bad though and I do think these are dye-based watercolors. It is surprisingly hard to find information about what Crayola, ooh, hmm, hmm, I think that's a dye-based black. It's surprisingly hard to find information about what Crayola uses to create their colors. And we're gonna try the white. And that doesn't make any sense, right? The white straight on the paper. So let me grab a Sharpie and we'll do an opacity test with the white. So I often have to do just my best guess based on years of doing watercolor painting. And sometimes I'm wrong. Okay, so there is actually some opacity to their white. This is, I would say this is a step above their, um, what's it called set? The 24 washable watercolor set that you guys saw me review. This is a step above that. So we've got our basic swatches down. Let's do some color mixing. So I have here a sheet of Canson's bulk watercolor paper. So it's 90 pound watercolor paper, very cheap. You can get it like in a pack of 100. And we're gonna do our color mixing now. So we wanna start by mixing primary red. So we've got our primary violet. Mix it over here. And then we've got our red orange. And that should give us primary red. That does indeed look like a primary red. And I'm going to do a little circle up here. Little circle of that up there. And that way helps us remember what two colors we mixed to get our primary red. And then they say yellow is just yellow, but primary blue is turquoise. Mix that over here with blue violet. And on my brush, it sort of became cyan as we watered it down. So clean the water brush out and do the same thing with the dots and then we have black and white so I'm going to 
Um, and then they say we can mix black in to make other colors. Oh yeah, we're gonna do green. So take some primary yellow. Oh, okay. Mix it with our primary blue. And of course, depending on how much yellow you mix with how much blue is gonna be the kind of green you get. But it seems like in general, you're going to get kind of a, a yellow green, a sappy green. So we'll take our primary blue and our yellow. So that gives us what people normally think of as their primary colors where you have red, yellow, and blue. Well, red, yellow, and green. Let's see now if we can get maybe a more bluish influence green by mixing blue violet, turquoise, and primary yellow. And I'm actually glad we have two yellows now, even if they're the same yellow. And we do get a more blue green, but it is still not necessarily what we think of when we think of like green, it's still a kind of a muted green. And that's usually what happens when you mix a warm yellow, like these two primary yellows are actually warmer yellows with blues. Let's see what we get when we mix yellow with turquoise. And leaving your paint on your palette like this, perfectly normal. And it means that later on, if you want some more of that same color, you don't have to go to all the trouble of remixing it. You can just pick it up from your palette. So that is turquoise and yellow. And it's a little bit more like a jungle green than like, say, a grass green, if that makes, if that starts making sense to you guys. Okay, let's do orange, which would be orange red mixed with primary yellow. And you can get all kinds of different oranges depending on how you mix, what proportion you mix your yellow and your red, and also how much water you use. And then we wanna mix violet. So we want red violet, which is really kind of a magenta in this set with blue violet. Oh, that's a, that's a decent purple. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good purple. A good middle of the road purple. Not too cool, not too warm. And I know a lot of this, especially for you older viewers, is super basic and you're kind of maybe probably kind of rolling your eyes and you're like, come on, Becca. But sometimes it's also good to go back and revisit your, revisit your basics. And to also try and, cause I did a, um, I did a, a field test with Daniel Smith watercolors, the essential six. And um, it's actually very similar to that, this except you get a cool yellow and you get a warm yellow. And you guys should totally check out that video because that will actually help you see how to mix all sorts of colors with just six colors. Mix skin tones, mix um, different greens, different reds, different blues, different violets. Um, I really recommend that you guys check that out. Okay, so I'm going to do one last thing. I'm gonna show you guys, or attempt to show you guys, I might fail here, how to mix a skin tone, because we don't have any browns. And usually, with a skin tone, I would want to have a brown in there. You're gonna want a lot more yellow than red, and I might need to refill my water brush, because I'm on E. And I'll move this so you guys can see it. And then we're gonna need something to neutralize that color. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue violet. And that's gonna start making a brown, as you guys can see. And then it really just depends on what kind of skin tone you're mixing. So we'll swatch this. 
and it looks like we've got kind of a warm, as it's over here, more intense, kind of a warm skin tone. Lots of range to that. Can add a little bit of red violet. That'll warm it up. Make it a darker brown. Still a really useful skin tone. A darker brown that turns into kind of a nice Caucasian color. Um, if we want to mix a darker brown skin tone than that, we just add more blue violet. There we get a darker brown. We want that to be a little warmer. We mix in some more red violet. Maybe even that's too much red, but you guys get the picture. And of course, working with a limited color selection like this, it is always really important to swatch and swatch and swatch your colors. And I wouldn't recommend using a well daisy palette with these because they are dye based and it can be really hard. I think they're dye based. I'm pretty sure they're dye based. It can be pretty hard to mix up enough color and at the right intensity. So I don't know that I would even recommend these for larger sort of illustration. So if your kid likes to work big, um, any of these Crayola colors might not necessarily be the ones for you. And you might want to go instead with colors that come pre-mixed where you have your, your pre-mixed browns and your pre-mixed oranges and stuff, because that way you can just go ahead and start painting. You don't have to do a lot of color mixing. But I think a set like this is definitely a good investment if you've got a nine to 13 year old who is really serious. They really want to learn how to do watercolor. They've already used the other Crayola sets that are on the market. They're ready for something that is more like an adult set. I would give them these as their training wheels. If they're persistent about it, if they take good care of the set, if they're good about mixing colors and trying things and experimenting, then you can buy them a nicer set. You can maybe, uh, if it were me and I was buying for say a 15 year old, I would go ahead and get them the Daniel Smith six color essential set. But I'm a watercolor artist and I would be there to supervise them. If they're taking classes, uh, I would get them what the teacher tells them to get. And then if they don't like that, you can always contact a watercolorist who's open to helping you find something that works for your kid and pick something like that. Um, that they recommend for home use. I wouldn't recommend bringing it into classes because bringing expensive watercolors into classes, children's classes, it just always causes jealousy and problems and consternation. It's just not, in my opinion, as someone who teaches kids and teaches these sort of classes, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, for home use, that's perfect. For class use, they need to be using what everybody else is using. And there's probably a reason the teacher wants them using that. Now, we're gonna take a closer look at these skin tones because I noticed something as they're drying, they're kind of separating out a little bit. So while this set is designed for color mixing, we're still getting when things are watered, watered down into a wash, we're still getting a lot of the problems that are very common to Crayola watercolors. And that is so much glycerin that uh, some colors will dry shiny and also uh, they're dye based. So they will separate out into their component colors, the, the individual dyes that were used to make up those colors once they're wet. So if this is, if you know this is gonna bother your kid, I can make some suggestions for some better watercolor sets. And I've been reviewing some other watercolor sets that might be a better fit for your child. So you can either shoot me an email, shoot me a comment, or you can watch those videos. So um, this is it for the Crayola Education Watercolors Mixing Set until I do my field test, which I hope you guys will look forward to. And I hope I will see you guys really soon with that. So thank you guys so much for watching and don't hesitate to, he to comment me your questions, ask me to show you specific techniques, demonstrate specific products. I probably have it stowed away somewhere. And even if I can't get to it immediately, I do try to get to all of those recommendations and requests eventually. So I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.